Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna discuss why you should choose point earning credit cards before choosing co-branded airline credit cards. Now, when I talk to people about travel, many people tell me that they wanna get themselves an airline credit card and they'd like to fly with a specific airline. So think about getting that card that is connected with that airline. And usually what I tell them is that before getting that airline specific credit card, you should look at getting yourself a credit card that has transferable currencies because these end up being more valuable than the airline miles that you're gonna earn with that co-branded credit card that's connected with the airline that you like. Now this confuses a lot of people because most people think that, well, if I happen to like to fly with United or with Delta, then I should get myself a United credit card so I can fly with United to earn United miles for my United flights. Or if I wanna fly with Delta, I should do the exact same thing, earn Delta miles for my Delta flights. But people don't realize that if you actually end up getting these co-branded cards, that you're gonna be stuck with these miles with that specific program, which actually makes things more limited as compared to getting yourself a credit card that's going to give you point currencies that are transferable. So transferable currency credit cards end up being point systems such as Ultimate War Points with Chase, Membership Award Points with American Express, Capital One Venture Miles, City Thank You Points, and also Built Rewards Points. Now with each one of these currencies, you have the ability to transfer them over to a variety of different either airlines or hotel programs. This ability makes these points more valuable than just having miles stuck with one specific program. Because while you may like to fly with Delta and actually get value with your Delta Sky Miles, the Delta Sky Miles are not gonna be as valuable when you're looking to try to fly, maybe let's say internationally over to Asia if you only happen to have Delta Sky Miles. But if you actually end up having something like Membership Reward Points that is also actually partnered with Delta, you can actually transfer over your points to Delta, but you can also actually look at other programs if you happen to want to fly internationally. The difference is that with the Membership Reward Points, chances are you're actually gonna be able to fly on a more luxurious flight with these Membership Reward Points for even less miles, which end up being pretty awesome. Now, this isn't to say that airline credit cards aren't worth getting. Many airline credit cards can still end up giving you a ton of value, and you can definitely end up getting good use from these airline credit cards but when you actually end up looking at the upside that you can't end up getting when it comes to potential with transferable currency credit cards, it just ends up being way better. But what I will do in this video is first I'm gonna go over some positive about airline credit cards that you're gonna end up seeing from having them, but then also seeing how you can actually end up using transferable currency credit cards and be able to get yourself even better value from them. So one of the first reasons why many people end up getting an airline credit card is get that free check bag. If you are someone who likes to check bags because you end up either having a big family or you just happen to like to travel with a ton of stuff, then getting a co-branded airline credit card with a airline that you like to fly with frequently can definitely end up saving you a decent amount of money there. I'm someone who doesn't check bags. I actually haven't checked bags in many years, but I can understand that there are a lot of people who are out there who do like to check bags on pretty much all the flights that they do. So if you end up getting yourself one of these airline credit cards that give you first check bag free, you're gonna be able to save yourself a lot of money depending on how frequently you end up flying with that airline. Now, another great thing you can earn with many different airline credit cards is going to be a companion pass. And the best one in the game is going to be the Southwest companion pass. If you are someone who likes to fly with Southwest, I highly recommend trying to get yourself the companion pass that's connected with their credit cards or with just earning the certain amount of points. You can usually get it easier from just getting a couple of their credit cards. But if you actually end up getting the companion pass connected with Southwest, you get you and a companion get to fly for the price of one. This can end up being incredible incredibly valuable. If you and also your spouse have one and you happen to have two kids, you can have you and both of your kids getting tickets at a buy one, get one free. I can't think of a better deal when it comes to airline credit cards. So definitely if you were someone who actually likes to travel with another companion frequently to look at getting yourself this companion pass. Now there are other companion passes out there. I don't think they're as good as the Southwest companion pass, such as like the ones that they end up giving you with the Delta, either reserve card or the platinum card, or the one that they end up giving you either with the Alaska card, and there's also one they end up giving you with American Airlines credit card with Barclays. However, you do have to spend a lot of money to be able to get it, so I don't typically recommend getting that one. But if you actually can get one of these companion passes, then I definitely think that this can end up being incredibly valuable. This might end up being one of the only reasons why I would recommend for someone to get themselves an airline credit card before getting themselves a transferable currency earning credit card, because if you could get yourself the Southwest companion pass and save all this money for your family, then it can just make a lot of sense. However, this is a contingent on how frequently your family is flying. If your family is flying a lot on Southwest, this can end up making sense, but I think that for the vast majority of families, that this can end up saving them money. However, I do still think that transferable currency earning credit cards still have the potential to give you more value. And the last great thing that I do like about airline credit cards is the ability to be able to get yourself status. Now, I'm not someone who actually goes for airline status. I am a free agent to airline.
Airlines. And any airline that's giving me the best deal when it comes to redeeming my miles is the one that I end up going with. But I do realize that there are some people who travel a lot for work who want to be able to get that higher tier status so they can end up getting upgraded for domestic first class flights so they can actually fly comfortably as they end up going to these different destinations. So if that happens to be you, then getting yourself an airline credit card can definitely make a lot of sense with the airline that you end up frequently flying with because in that situation, definitely having status can end up making your travel experience much better. But I do think that for the vast majority of Americans, it's not gonna be worth it to try to chase airline status. The better way to go about it is just to try to find the best deal that you can with the airline that happens to be flying to the destination that you wanna to go to. Now, I know I just said many great things about airline credit cards, but even with all of that stuff that I said, I still think that having transferable currencies is just gonna be way more valuable. And the reason why is because of the ability to just fly with so many different airlines. So say you happen to have one of the Delta credit cards and you end up seeing that there is an American American Express charge cards, such as either the green card, the gold card, or the platinum card, that allow you to rack up points that you could transfer over to Delta, and you're thinking to yourself, well, why not just keep the Delta credit card and then just keep my miles with this program because I like to fly with Delta. That might seem okay, but you don't realize how much you actually could be losing out because it's gonna end up being a scenario where you might end up wanting to fly maybe either with United or with American Airlines, and you may end up looking at American Express and going, well, they don't have American Airlines as a transfer partner, and they also don't have United as a transfer partner. Most of the transfer partners that are connected with American Express are a bunch of foreign airlines that I've never even heard of so I don't get what the value is in actually having the ability to transfer over to all these different random airlines. The thing is is that there are many different alliances and partnerships with these airlines that allow you to fly on the airline that you want even if you don't actually happen to have their miles. So an example of this would end up being that say you happen to want to fly on a short haul flight with United, if you actually end up looking on United's website, you can end up seeing that there may end up being save reward availability. And if there is, you can actually go over to Air Canada and use Air Canada's miles to be able to book that United flight. In many situations, when I've looked at this, I've seen that I can get myself a better deal with my Air Canada miles. And Air Canada is actually a transfer partner with American Express, which means that if I actually want to fly on a United flight that ends up being a short flight, I actually can end up doing that with transferring over my membership or points over to Air Canada to fly on that United flight. And if you actually want to fly on an international United flight, you can actually end up looking at using Avianca, which ends up also being partnered with United. And Avianca is going to be excellent with getting yourself business class, lay flat, Polaris flights with United with using Avianca miles. Avianca is also gonna be a transfer partner with the membership rewards program. So just know that even though you don't happen to see United connected with American Express, you do have the ability to fly on a United aircraft just using one of their partner's miles. Another example of this that's very similar would be to use your membership war points to fly on American Airlines flights. And the way you end up doing this is by transferring over your membership war points over to British Airways. British Airways is partnered with American Airlines, which means that you can actually redeem your British Airways miles for American Airlines flights. And if you happen to find a short haul flight with American Airlines, chances are it's actually going to end up being a little bit cheaper with British Airways redeeming it as compared to what American Airlines is going to be charging for that exact same flight. So this is going to be another great example of how you can end up using your membership war points to fly on one of the major airlines in America without actually even being able to transfer over to them directly. And not only can you fly on them, you can actually fly on them for a cheaper amount of miles than what these actual airlines are going to be charging within their own program. So this is the reason why transferable currencies are gonna be way stronger than just having a Delta credit card and earning yourself Delta miles. And funny enough, even just having a Delta credit card and earning yourself Delta miles may not even be the best way to fly with Delta because Delta miles aren't always the strongest miles to use to fly on Delta flights. Virgin Atlantic is a transfer partner of American Express and also Virgin Atlantic is partnered with Delta. And if you actually look at a number of Delta's flights that also you can end up booking with Virgin Atlantic, they end up being significantly cheaper as compared to what Delta is going to be charging in their own currency. So if you end up transferring over your membership war points over to Verge Atlantic instead of Delta, you can save yourself a significant amount of miles by doing this. And one of the major sweet spots in the points and miles game is going to be to fly on Delta One over to Europe from the East Coast of the US. And the best way to actually end up doing that is not to transfer over your membership war points over to Delta because this is going to end up costing you hundreds of thousands of membership war points or Delta miles. But if you actually end up transferring them over to Verge Atlantic, you can find saver award availability that you can actually end up doing this for only 50,000 
Virgin Atlantic miles. This is how I and many other people in the points of miles game are able to travel in luxury for incredibly cheap. Because yes, we could transfer over hundreds of thousands of points over to Delta to be able to book this flight, but then we would end up running out of our points very quickly if we end up doing that. But 50,000 points is not that many points. Every single charge card right now with American Express is going to give you more than that for the sign up bonus, which is going to allow you to get yourself a business class flight over to Europe. And to top it off, to show you how great transferable currencies can end up being, transfer bonuses with American Express in the last year all the way up to 30%. So British Airways right now and Iberia actually have a 30% transfer bonus with membership reward points. So if you want to transfer over 100,000 membership reward points, you get yourself 130,000 British Airway miles. This can end up being incredibly valuable. Now, I do not recommend transferring over them speculatively because what you want to be able to do is have the ability to be able to transfer over these points to whichever programs can work out best for your next trip. So if you end up transferring over those points to this program, it's going to be stuck there the same way that either your Delta miles are stuck in your Delta program or your United miles are stuck in United or American Airlines miles are stuck in those programs. You want to be able to have the ability to choose when the opportunity comes up or when you actually realize the destination you want to go to to find the best sweet spot because this can end up being the best way if you get the max value for your points. So I'm not telling people to avoid getting themselves airline credit cards because as I've stated in this video, airline credit cards definitely still have some good use cases such as getting yourself free check bags, companion pass, or if you're looking for status. However, I still think that getting yourself transferable currency is gonna end up being way stronger because of the versatility with those points. But if you happen to be in the market for a new credit card, you happen to see the elevated offers that's connected with the Delta credit cards, but you also happen to see the elevated offer that's connected with the American Express green card, I just think that the versatility and the ability to get yourself incredible value with the green card is just gonna make a lot more sense for you to apply for that card as compared to the Delta cards, which can end up being valuable, but you're just gonna end up being way more limited with these airline credit cards. But let me know in the comment section down below, what do you feel about airline credit cards as compared to getting yourself some transferable currency earning credit cards. Now, if you have been interested in any credit card, I will actually have referral links in the description box. If you decide to use them, they will really help on the channel and I'll be incredibly thankful for your support. And if you happen to really like this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.